If there is one thing that I think can really ruin crap for me when it comes to playing gacha or specifically in my case Hoyo gacha games is when the overbearing meta players comes in to tell other people how you should play the game or whatnot without anyone asking them to say anything about it in the first place. Somewhere around a week ago, I came across this video by a channel called Gacha Potato titled Unexpected Drama from Not Doing Dailies. In it, he talked about the complaints that he got from some parts of his comment section in another video that literally tells people why he doesn't do dailies in Star Rail anymore. But it sorta of got a tad bit deeper than just not doing dailies because in that other video not only did they took notice of potatoes obvious lack of dailies but they also noticed that this guy didn't 12 star apocalyptic shadow and the comments on his video goes around the range of people pretty much crapping on him for losing so many seller jades by not doing dailies and others who are lamenting over the fact that he can't do 12 star apocalyptic shadow when it's apparently so easy one of them just straight up called him a shit star rail player, the same guy who said minus 1800 jades, I guess you do you champ. Now in the unexpected drama video, he addresses these comments by essentially saying, albeit in a rather satirical way, hey, I play however I want, you know, I don't care about losing these jades, nor is my account struggling in any important way whatsoever. He even showed that he actually did end up top starring that same apocalyptic shadow session so even that didn't end up mattering all that much. And quite frankly, I don't get why people can no longer just leave it at that, you know? We have our own ways of having fun with the game, why is it that you have to come in and be such downers in the way we do stuff? Some comments in the dailies videos really got me going, like this guy who went, with this explanation, why do you even play HSR anymore? You don't do dailies, you don't pull, you don't build characters, but you have completed endgame content, so what do you actually get from having HSR installed? And when someone gave them a legitimately valid answer which is, ever heard of Trailblazer story? Only for the comment poster to then reply, I don't think HSR story writing is that spectacular to have to wait six weeks for a couple hours of gameplay that you could easily just watch it on youtube if the trailblaze missions were your main source of entertainment from the game are you kidding me you know how idiotic that sounds like that's like saying why play football when you can watch it on tv why try to play a piece of musical composition where you can just listen to someone else play it it's insanely idiotic in two parts one the fact that because this guy thinks that star real story is mediocre means that it is actually mediocre and two the fact that people can't have fun in a game without having to drown themselves in every single gameplay mechanic the game has and coming back to the guy who just said i've seen accounts that are two months old get 6600 easily your account is good but you're not essentially saying that hey these new accounts can full star apocalyptic shadow you're just a crap player let me tell you something, okay? It actually makes sense for two month old accounts to be able to clear AS in an easier capacity because the characters released within the last two month period is basically tailored to go up against AS levels. Whereas people who have played longer might have completely different rosters of characters that I have built that are not suitable for AS. Besides, I'm sure two months is just an exaggeration. If they can full clear AS, then it's gotta be some months older than that, unless they giga no life the game, which. I mean, I guess would explain this guy's situation. Of Point is, the whole interaction with the comment section just reignited this like dormant irritation that I've always had with these meta or you should play the game this type of way kind of players because it also reminded me of some of my own recent encounters with these gremlins. Not only in Star Rail, but of course in Genshin as well, the, the predecessor, you know, where it all began. And specifically, I want to talk about this post I made a month ago and this video that I made a couple of weeks ago. Let's look at the posters because that's the first one that came out and essentially it was just me posting about how I wanted more crit damage on my face Xiao, but the game decided to throw me a curveball and rolled everything to the crit rate substat instead. A rare showcase of my non-existent relic rolling luck and I just wanted to show how I found it hilarious. Now apart from the cool comments that I got which resonated with the comedy of the post, thank you guys, I appreciate you all, there were the ones that I really lost a lot of vibe with. and. They all center around the fact that my 76% crit rate on Fei Xiao is not enough because if I want to play her properly, I should get her to 100% crit rate or as close as possible to 100% crit rate. At first, I just kinda let it be because, well, 
too tired to deal with it. But then the same type of comments and more annoying ones popped out. Like this one guy who decided to give me a full rundown on how he managed to find the optimal face Xiao build whilst also writing as if I have no idea how to play this game in the first place. He even felt the need to say on another comment, she needs close to 100% crit rate. I have tested it. Bro, really? And look man, I tried to be nice and in one of the comments that was harping on this facial crit rate thing, I just basically said, hey, she full clears content for me and that's all I really want. But in the end, I got so annoyed that I just had to leave, leave like a proper remark somewhere. So it was this comment that said, given everyone saying to get more crit rate, uh, listen to the professionals with a definitely not at all condescending smiley face at the end of it. My reply was simple. I don't want to. She's doing just fine for me and if I wanted professional opinion, I would have asked or looked for it myself. Because just like the one in Gacha Potatoes videos, the premise is just the same. No one asked. Look, first off, you should really only be discussing a character's meta or the way to play them when you're either one, on a character build and guide video, or two, you were actually asked by someone to give them tips. Other than that, I swear for the lack of some better words, I can only say, please shut your face hole. Trust me, I was so tempted to title the video just that. Dear Hoyo Meta players, please learn to shut your face hole. But I figured I should be a bit nicer. The other problem with this is that these people just assume that since they had a certain experience with the character, whether it's during building them or using them, then everyone else would have the same experience. That's just not a thing. Like shit, rolling up to 100% crit rate on a character is not the easiest thing to do, even at the sacrifice of crit damage stats. Plus, before you all went ahead and spout all that stuff about Fei Xiao's crit rate, you think I didn't try to go for higher crit rates? Look at this post I made far before Fei Xiao was even released, because this is me just trying to farm for her relics. Look at all those relics you see being trashed. Why am I trashing them? Because not a single crit substat on them. And that's a situation that I'm still suffering from for now when I'm like farming or pre-farming for character relics. But at the same time, I didn't need her to have more. She was clearing everything I throw at her just fine and generally 60-70% to 70 crit rate is where I'd put the that should be good enough line because knowing my luck and knowing how things have been going for me in my gacha history, going for more than that would just be an absolute waste of time without having to sacrifice something. And that time also I could be using to better my characters who are actually in dire need of a good build. Eventually I even got her to a better point of crit rate and crit damage. And considering the fact that I use her with Fu Shen most of the times, since I don't have a Venturine and I have other sustains built for other teams, she gets another 12% crit rate and that's 91% in total. And that's far more than enough for my usual DPS build. If I don't crit with that kind of percentage then fuck it. Shit happens, you know? Not everyone has the same exact experiences in this game, and you're so out of touch if you think that your min-maxing obsessions and luck is something that a lot of people share, when in fact, you guys are just the outliers of this occasion. Besides, if you really want to be all meta about it, Relic Scorer puts my face Xiao as an SS. What more do you want? That's just the other half of the issue. The Genshin video is where the second half of this whole thing really just pisses me off even further. I was just trying to showcase the differences of how it feels to clear the abyss from back then when it was still within the first rotation to how it feels to clear abyss now. And people wasted no time jumping on the haha I know how to play the game better than you so here let me put this sort of trying to be cool but I'm actually boasting comment to make me feel superior kind of shit. All while showcasing just how inept they are at understanding what other people find to be enjoyable and how it is that not everyone experiences or plays the game the way they do or prioritizes the game the way they do. I mentioned how it is difficult for me to be in a discord call when I'm still trying to finish up an abyss level because it gets distracting for me. And then this guy said, no, nah, I can still talk with people. It depends on the characters you have and game knowledge. Okay, bro, simply told the guy that not everyone has that kind of focus, but good for him. And then he said, I think it's mostly the case of how much you are playing your teams with the time you get to use to rotations and don't really need to think about it that much. It doesn't matter. Some people just don't have that sort of focus to be doing abyss and having discord talks with others. You might have it, but I don't and so are a bunch of other people so please stop thinking that everyone is the same. You wanna say it's skill issue? Go ahead, I don't care. Even when I explain to people why I play things the way I do, 
they still tried to correct me or something. Please use your jungling ult inside of Benot's ult because you're losing so much damage otherwise. So I said, it would be true in other scenarios, but I'm only using Xiangling to get the 25% attack bonus. And number two, constantly apply Pyro for the crystallized procs for Navia's shotgun. That's all I need. I didn't really build Xiangling for damage anyways, or for anything specific at all. I just chuck a bunch of ER on her and hope that it's enough for a couple rotations of her ult in a single chamber. I was trying to be nice about it. Thankfully, the next person who asked me about it saying that it's still free damage immediately understood when I said that my Xiangling ain't really built for damage. Only for someone else to say that it's just free damage with a slightly different order when I've clearly said that my priority with Shangling's ult is not for damage but to apply pyro. Besides even in that video, my pyronado barely got any damage increase from Benna's ult cause like I said, I don't use her often. So her damage is just whack and again, she does what I need her to do. And then there's this pillock. 2021 can clear with 2 or 3 specific teams only. 2024 can use like 15 different teams lol. I don't know why you feel it's harder. We got so many OP as support since then like Farina, Xianyun, Nahida, Kuki. Using teams like Hytham, Nilu, Blue might make it harder for you as well Albedo or Xiangling with bad ER plus no way but I don't know. And then he talks about how he casually 1 minute clears Abyss on each side and whatever else he was spotting about his apparently shit team. First off, what specific team? I was clearing Old Abyss with Hu Tao, Rosaria, and a random side of Ningguang. What part of that team is specific and anywhere near within what people would do? Well, you know why I put Ningguang in that team? It's because I just didn't know who to put on the fourth one, so I just thought a bit more damage wouldn't hurt. There was nothing specific in my thought process. And of course, there's gonna be more team options three years later. We have a lot more characters now. Your logic is just lost in Pluto. And second, sure, Abyss is a whole lot easier now. If you completely forget that there are more enemies to worry about, there are more mechanics to worry about, and there are more health to worry about. Sure, we get to play with more characters, but the fact that a single bare bones raw dog Hu Tao charge attack is able to take chunks of HP from a ruin grader all the way back when is more than enough to see that things were infinitely easier. 27k of charge attack damage will mean jack squat in the face of an elite enemy in current Abyss. And third, and this is the point that really drives home the whole I'm a meta player and everyone else's opinion doesn't matter, is his whole I clear it in one minute each side shit. You people think that everyone wants to do one or two minute abyss clears when all we want to do is to just clear it and get the rewards. We don't care if it pushes the time but if we can do it in a way that's more comfortable for us and more enjoyable, then we'll do it our own way. Using teams like Hytham Nilu Blue might make it harder for you as you will Albedo or Xiangling with bad ER plus no vape but I don't know. Yeah, okay prick. You know why? That's why all I said to this guy in that comment section was okay because my god if you can ever sound as pretentious as you did here in real life then I send my preemptive condolences to the sanities of those around you. Plus, why are you talking about Vape Xiangling when it's so obviously a Navia team? Why the shit would you bring up a mechanic that doesn't have any correlation with the team that I'm using? My Xiangling has over 200% ER, and for a lot of people that saw that, they said it was too much. But I guess it wasn't according to this genius, but I don't care, I cleared it anyway. In regards to that, you know what's even more annoying about these comments? You'd think that with all that they are saying, it seems like I was screwing up my abyss runs or I wasn't clearing it properly. But if you actually watch that video, you'll see that I cleared the chamber while having 30 seconds left on the timer. That is plenty of time left for someone who doesn't min-max the crap out of their builds, and it was even enough time for me to fuck up one rotation and still clear the chamber. Is something happening in your life that makes it so that that extra 30 seconds is so critical for you? If so, then sorry to say, you shouldn't be playing any games at that moment and just focus on actually dealing with that critical thing in your life. This is the same thing that I see with people who are obsessed about one cycling Star Rail content. Who the fuck cares if you can't one cycle MOC or any endgame content? Who cares if your Fei Xiao missed one hit out of her ult? Who cares if you don't do 80k pure fiction clears? As long as we get all the rewards, who the hell cares? And like, I just don't get it. I shouldn't have to explain why I do things the way I do and that I find to be the most enjoyable or the most comfortable, but it's just infuriating how even when I do explain it, people can't just say, oh, I. Cool. No, they 
just have to have some sort of input as if there's no other way to enjoy the game. Especially that guy who's just scoffing at the fact that people actually look forward to the stories of these games. What? We like the story. What's wrong with that? Forgive us if we just happen to have the attention span to read through more than two words of dialogue and actually appreciate the lore that the writers have given to us. When you guys can know life min-maxing relics, substats, remembering all the combos and numbers you need for certain optimal character builds, we can track back and think about the Lord of Silence, Polka Kakamon, the genius assassin, how the Aeons banded together to send Tazendroth to the next life, the Cremators, the fact that Phlogiston connects the world of Genshin and Star in a more materialistic sense, I can name you which Genshin song plays in which areas and their musical differences and many more interesting tidbits that you guys just didn't have the brain cells to pay attention to. And it all runs back to this comment from Gacha Potato's video where we can put it in a more general scope and explore how much more idiotic it is. With this explanation, why do you even play these certain gacha games anymore? You don't do dailies, you don't pull, you don't build characters, you've completed endgame content, so what do you actually get from having these gacha games installed? It's called finishing the game, you dolt. Y'all just can't fathom the fact that some people are able to treat these games as if they are just games. Not some daily gacha grind where they have to spend some time of their every daily lives to play through. And I know this because I used to be on the oh you should play it every day or you're missing out type of player. I can admit that. But then I have a sister who now literally only comes back to Genshin just to play the story and nothing else. Her resin has been kept for as long as Star Rail had been released and she doesn't do dailies as well. Eventually I just understood that I should let it be. And as long as she finds her own type of fun or finds some form of enjoyment from the way she plays and she doesn't complain about the lack of things she will have to go through in the future, then the game serves its purpose perfectly. And look, I'm not saying that you meta players shouldn't exist, don't get me wrong here. Of course, I think that your insights and your type of players are useful in the places where it is actually needed. And I'm sure that you all have your own fun in your own ways. And there are some of you who can genuinely leave it be once an explanation is there. One of my friends who I talk about gacha stuff the most with is a fully certified meta guy. We're the complete opposite when it comes to our gameplay style. Yet he's able to understand that the way I choose my characters to pull and the way I play the game have differing priorities with him. And that's it. We never once clashed over that aspect because we never once thought of dictating the other. So please understand that a lot of people doesn't share that ever pressing need to do everything the right way as a lot of you would try to put it. My principle is always like this, let people play however they want to play, so long as they don't complain about the shortcomings of their own playstyle. Like Gacha Potato, he doesn't do dailies, he doesn't pull for many characters, and he takes his time with endgame content. So long as he doesn't complain about not having gems, or not having characters, or lacking the resources to do some certain stuff, then I say fuck it, he wants to play that way, let him be. It would only be annoying if he ends up complaining about those things that I said that he shouldn't complain about, because then he'd just have to learn that it's just the consequences of his own actions. And that applies to every other playstyle. Let people play the way they want to play. People enjoy the games in many different ways, ways that you might never have thought of to be enjoyable in the first place, and that's just how it is. Okay, this video has gone on for a while, I'm sorry for the rant, but it's just such an annoying thing to see continuously happening throughout my time hovering around this community. A good shout to Gacha Potato, go check out his channel if you want to see some dry and sometimes satirical gacha content where the guy worships that way for some reason. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around for this long, I just want to see this sort of thing far less in places where it wasn't really looked for, and I just wish that people can just let others be honestly. Until the next video, my name's Leafy, and I'll see you all next time. Sayonara.